Hello, and welcome to week 10. It's nice to have you back. I hope you had a good vacation week. During this week, oh, it's another week where you're going to be creating a big assignment. So there are, you know, your discussion and your blog for this week, your regular stuff. And then for your large assignment, you're going to be creating a piece of professional development. Um, hopefully this is going to be something that you can use in your classroom or in your school. Um, if not, you'll have it. You'll have it at the ready for next time. Um, the focus of it is going to be technology, obviously, the things that um, we've already looked at in this class. I put a, my friend Alex and I, uh, she's a colleague from the middle school library in my district, she and I put together a digital literacy uh, presentation for our school back in November, and for our district rather, back in November. And I did put a link to that uh, if you want to take a look at it. That's more than you're going to need to do for this. But I would like you to assume that you've been given an hour and what are you going to present? to your to your colleagues to your um, to whomever you can you can pick your your uh, audience if you like it can be for for parents if you want it can be for um, administration or it can be probably the most realistic usage for this is going to be for uh, your fellow teachers all right so you're going to do that <laughs> there's information about it in the assignment piece and also in the uh, weekly um, information module I have um, the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to review a journal article or a magazine article um, or a study. I have a list of resources here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. There, there are seven different ones, and I'm going to tell you. I didn't want to deconstruct them in in the um, in the content page, but I'll just give you a little overview right now, and I'm going to do it in order of page numbers because <laughs> who are we kidding? We're busy. So. Weighing in in only two pages is Michelle Boole's article, Go With the Flow. Go with the flow, man. Now, this is from 2008, so it's a little bit creaky, uh, but the information there is excellent. It's basically just how to talk to your um, teachers and sort of, this talks specifically about blogs and wikis. Wikis we don't really use anymore, but it's about getting over teacher um, resistance to new technology, which hopefully is less of a problem now that everybody's had to sort of get on board with uh, digital learning. But you might find that useful to you. Okay, the next one is the introduction to it's Sharon Coates, uh, Coatney rather. She wrote a book called The Many Faces of School Library Leadership, which is terrific. And uh, it's from what year? 2010. Um, and the introduction to that, that's three pages. Yeah, three pages long, perfectly manageable, but she talks about how we should be uh, considering ourselves as leaders, and it's kind of a little call to action. Um, the next one is by this guy, Carl Harvey. It's called Putting on the Professional Development Hat. That also weighs in at three pages. And frankly, Carl Harvey, <laughs> I don't know, he's, he's really into this hat metaphor, but we're going to, we're going to let him, we're going to let him have that. Um, this one is from 2013, uh, which is, you know, not brand new, but fairly recent. But then I look at the book study that he's doing, and it's Blogs, Wikis, and Podcasts by Will Richardson, which is the book that I realized was a little bit too long in the tooth for this class. So, you know, again, grain of salt, but it's um, the process is still relevant. Then we're in the Wayback Machine, 2008, for Helen Blower's uh, 10 Tips for 23 Things. Now, Helen Blower's, well, read the article. She's a fascinating woman. She she did this professional develop thing that was completely self-directed. Uh, it involved blogging. It involved robust discussion. I don't know if you can see any parallels, but it was what um, in, it was sort of what infused when I initially created this course. You know, sure, I created this course in 2010, so two years later. Anyway, her her look at how that um, came to be is there at four pages. Then we've got Wendy Stevens, welcome to your post-coronavirus school library. This is from Teacher Librarian. And the first page is thoroughly depressing. It's basically, you know, all of the crap we just went through. Um, but there's some good nuts and bolts advice throughout and it's bracketed by a goal and a call to arms. So um, that's, that's four pages of what we've just been living through. Then uh, Janice Gilmore C. This is this is quite good. This is a, a nuts and bolts guide to providing PD. It's a, one of the chapters in Sharon Coatney's um, School Library Leadership book, and it is the entire section about um, how school librarians can be providing professional development. And then the last one, I got four pages in. Maybe you'll have more luck. It's by uh, Violet Harada, and it's a study 
a practice-centered approach to professional development, teacher librarian collaboration in a capstone project with high schoolers. Some people love reading studies and they love seeing how things tangibly happen. And if that is you, I think it might be like 24 pages. You don't have to give it a deep, deep reading, but if that's something that you'd like to look at it and deconstruct it for the rest of us, that'd be terrific. So I want you to choose one of these articles um, and cover it in your blog. It's not a huge, you know, fancily formatted journal review. Basically, I want, I think I had four things. I want you to tell me why you chose it. What is the main thrust of the article? Do you agree with the main idea? And what did you take away from it? And then if you write that up, that's your blog post for this week. But it also, I would like you also to put it in the discussion just so that you can, so that everybody has sort of an overview of, of all the articles that are available. Um, I believe that's everything. I do have a, uh, I want you to fill out a Google form for me. So this week, big old project. Then weeks 11 and 12, I've basically got two weeks off because you should have your copy of Catalog It. If not, get it this week. I'm actually going to try to remember to put that in the content. Catalog It. Um, it's the one book that is required for this course. And um, you're just going to read it. For two weeks, you're going to read it. And it's you could read it in one week, but there's a lot of information in there, particularly if you're not in a library. If you're in a library right now, you're going to have a basic idea and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, hey, I should do that. If you're not in a library, though, it's it's a lot to get through at once. So I've broken it down. You'll see what the page numbers are. And there are also some activities, some worksheets and stuff in there. I'm not going to check your work because you're grown-ups but just make sure that's how you're going to know that you are understanding what's going on is by doing those activities in there so make sure you got your copy of catalog it and then uh, for weeks 13 and 14 we're going to look at OPACs online public access catalogs and um, what I would like you to do is uh, what I would like to do is pair you up because you need to interview a librarian for this and many of you are librarians many of you are not librarians so I'm going to put people together uh, based on your <laughs> access to an OPAC and then you will um, you'll study another one that you're not familiar with and compare them uh, for that week but part of the, the first part of that is to you need to have access to two uh, cataloging systems so if you don't in your in your work if you're not working in libraries I want you to be able to interview someone who does so those of you who have an OPAC your part of that assignment will be to tell the other person what you know. And those of you who don't have an OPAC, your part of the assignment will be to write down what that person says. And you'll be all set. Okay, so I believe that that is everything for this week. Hope you have a great week. I look forward to uh, seeing what you've come up with. Have a good one. See you, see you in the discussion boards.